It's time to talk about SSD speed. How fast of an SSD do you need for pro photography and video workflow? Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. The inspiration for this came from my various benchmark for the Apple M1 Pro, M1 Max, and also M1 Ultra computer. One of the things that always come up in those benchmark and review is SSD speed. And in testing them, Apple have made a mention in numerous keynotes that they have provided that it can get up to around 7.8 gigabytes per second. However, that really only applies to the 4 and 8 terabyte model. If you get, for example, any of the lower capacity one, the speed does drop slightly, but you're still getting a really fast SSD internal to your machine. And one of the conversation in the very beginning has kind of skewed in a way that we should buy and get the larger SSD in order to get the faster read and write speed. And to me, that doesn't really make a lot of sense because in a daily workflow, you're not really going to be using that kind of speed anyway. That unless you really have an application or a need for that larger storage, or you know that your app can really utilize that high speed transfer, for instance, it doesn't make a lot of sense to really buy into that. And you're probably better off just saving your money and configuring the machine as you would need I would probably say into the future a little bit because these SSD internally to the machine are not upgradable. So if you think you're going to need 512 today, but in a year you may need, for example, one or two terabyte, I would just configure with those, especially if you are planning to keep the machine, but I wouldn't necessarily go and buy more memory just for the sake of getting a faster SSD internally. All right. Talking about SSD speed, well, let's kind of look at the price for Apple storage, for instance. Going from 512 and then bumping it up to one terabyte, you're paying $200 more. Two terabyte, you're paying $600 more. This is still a lot of money, but it's not as bad to stomach, considering that when you go to like four terabyte, you're paying $1,200 more and eight terabyte, you're paying $2,400 more. I mean, let's say this, if you wanna get like a four terabyte one, there are external SSD out there that you can get. And we're gonna talk about like how fast those SSD you need to really accomplish the work that you need to do as a creative photographer or video person. All right. So let's take a look at this. For example, this is a speed comparison between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra. 512 and also one terabyte. You can see that there are some write speed difference there, but for the most part, the read speed is still at a little bit over five gigabytes per second. Here's a chart comparing all of these machines together to read and write speed and so forth. And I also add a few things in there too. For instance, I add a Thunderbolt SSD on the inside there that you can take a look, an NVMe inside a USB 4 enclosure, Samsung T7, it can go at 1000 megabytes per second and also Samsung T5. Now, if you don't know what these look like right now, don't worry, what I'm gonna do is kind of give you an overview for all of those. So let's talk about the different type of SSDs. These are generally the older generation, what you're seeing right now, comprised of like the Samsung T5, the G Drive SSD, or for instance, the SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD, the old version. They can read and write up to around 500 megabytes per second. But here's the thing, when you plug this into a Macintosh system, they're gonna be, I would probably say anywhere between 350 to like 450 because there are some overhead, but this is more than you're ever going to need because if you're running Lightroom, for instance, importing, preview, exporting, composing all the files together or merging them all into like HDR or Panorama, whatever, it doesn't really burst and use the speed on the SSD as much. So getting a faster SSD, the only benefit you're going to really get from that is when you're initially trying to copy the file to the SSD or when you're trying to copy things out from the SSD, provided that the source or the destination you're trying to take those files to can really copy and read and write at a high speed. If it doesn't, then you're really limited by the slowest media in the chain anyway. So it really doesn't matter much. So these, if you can find them at a good value, I think it's going to work for the workflow just fine. However, there are newer ones on the market now. For example, a Samsung T7, a G Drive SSD. This is like, I think their newer generation. A SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD version two, for instance. These can read and write at around a thousand megabytes per second on the system and they are USB-C. So these would definitely function just fine. Let me put it this way. If you can find these, for example, like Samsung T7, that is only 10 or $20 more than the T5, I would definitely look at getting the T7 because it is faster. Even though you may not be using it, I mean, it's nothing wrong with getting a higher speed for this one. 
Now, moving on to the higher end of things, there is, for example, the SanDisk Extreme Pro, for instance, that can read and write up to 2,000 megabytes per second. I mean, these, for the most part, for photography, and for like 4K video is definitely overkill. You don't need these and the price is gonna really jump up quite a bit. Then we also move into what we call the Thunderbolt type connection. For example, Samsung X5 or the G Drive Pro SSD, for instance, these can read at up to 2,800 megabytes per second read and write. So they are definitely much faster, but it's also much pricier at the very same time. And then the other thing that you also get is an NVMe SSD, for instance, if you take one of these, if you have some laying around, you can put them into a USB 4 enclosure and get fairly good read and write speed, very close to what you would get with these Thunderbolt connections with these cards externally under the system. So there are different ways to really expand the storage for your machine, especially if you didn't order a Mac with a large storage already. You don't have to go out and buy the fastest SSD that are available in the market any of the SSDs, truth be told, are going to work just fine for the workflow. For instance, let's take a look at Lightroom Classic and really observe how much speed does it really utilize when it's exporting, for instance. Starting with the one-to-one -one preview, 1000 file, these are the same 1000 Nikon DA50 file that I use in all of my benchmark. There are four bars there. The first two says internal. That means that the Lightroom catalog and also the raw file is stored internally on the computer SSD and I'm using two Mac Studio with the 48 GPU and the other one with the 64 GPU to do this test. The other two charts below you can see one of them says EXT T5 that means that everything is stored on a external Samsung T5 SSD and that SSD can read and write at only 500 megabytes per second compared to the internal on the Mac Studio that I have that can read and write at above five gigabytes per second. So 10 times less yet, we're still seeing almost the same one-to-one -one preview time. And by the way, you may say that there are maybe 35 seconds or something like that variation. I mean, these are just technically margin of error. It's not that you know, one of them is like half the time or anything like that. And the last one is showing you that what happened if I store, for example, Lightroom catalog and also the raw file on an external NVMe SSD inside a USB 4 enclosure. This drive, this NVMe one can read at 2800 megabytes per second and write at 1800 megabytes per second. So it's not symmetrical, but you can see there's no time differences whatsoever. Now let's have a look at the export for these 1000 files. Obviously for all of these, yes, there are a huge variation in speed for the SSD. One that can go up to like above five gigabytes per second down to one that can go to around 500 megabytes per second for read and write, and there are almost no time differences whatsoever. So what this is telling us is that the speed of the SSD for the most part in the daily usage for image editing, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, Capture One, Photoshop for that matter, will not matter as much at all. So you don't have to worry about that. In fact, I have one more thing to show you, and this is a screen capture from iStat Menu. If you don't use that app, I highly recommend that you consider doing so. I'll leave a link to the app in the description below because it really gives you a lot of data about your machine. And you can see right now that with a two terabyte NVMe SSD, the graph on the right will show you that there are kind of just like two sections. The first section is the one-to-one -one preview. The second section is the export. And for the most part, we have an SSD that can write at 1800 megabytes per second and can read at 2800 megabytes per second, yet we're really using under 200 megabytes per second or technically even just under 150 all this time. So it really doesn't matter much at all. And this will also go into Final Cut Pro as well, editing 4K footage, for instance, which I do all the time, internal 420 or 10-bit 422. I mean, for the most part, even when I'm exporting or scrubbing it really fast, when I'm scrubbing it like, for example, at like two times speed just to get the clips through, it's really using maybe around 20 megabytes per second. And for the most part, the most I ever see in Final Cut Pro use is generally around 100 to maybe around 120 megabytes per second for the most part. So this just tells us that we don't really need the most expensive and the fastest SSD out there to really do the work. And as I mentioned, the only benefit you gain from having a faster SSD is the fact that you can write to the SSD faster when you're copying those files in 
or you can copy the file out faster provided that the source of that files or the destination for those files are as fast as the SSD that you have. And chances are many of them are not going to be that fast. So as I mentioned, for photo and video workflow, for the most part, unless you're really doing like 8K RAW or anything like that, the most basic SSD will do the job just fine. And here are some examples of the common memory cards that we would use for a camera. Granted, there are more of them out there. However, these are the more common type. And the only one that can really read at a fast speed, meaning that you can copy at a very high speed to your Mac, is the CF Express Type B that can read at around 1700 megabytes per second. But let's say, for instance, you have a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio, you need to download those cards, three of them simultaneously at the same time, in order for you to even saturate that five gigabytes per second bandwidth on these internal SSDs. Obviously, if you use any other type of card that are slower, you're not really going to see a benefit from a faster SSD that much anyway. So I hope that this really helps guide you in selecting the right SSD externally that you want to use for your system and also help you choose the right size for the SSD that you want to use in your Mac as well. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new and in our we trust.